All right. Well, we will wrap up with um, uh, dreams and probably one of the more fascinating uh, discussions. Uh, as as you can tell, uh, one of the uh, movies that that were was popular a few years back was the movie Inception, which uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was in. And and actually, once you learn a little bit about uh, the dreams themselves. Um, and about dreams as they are, you, you might watch this movie in a little bit different way. Uh, and dreams uh, have been debated in terms of how, uh, what we dream and why we dream it. Um, one one uh, author referred to it as the hallucinations of the mind, of the sleeping mind itself, hallucinations of the uh, sleeping mind and dreams can be uh, obviously pretty fantastic personally I tend to look at dreams as kind of reworking things our brain um, hates things that are, are uh, un incomplete and so our tendency is to rework I had a friend of mine who particularly was working, he was an engineering type of student, he was working on a physics problem, couldn't seem to fix it, he seemed to work out the solution, so he went to sleep. And he found that during the time that he was sleeping, he woke up with his solution in mind, went over, worked it out completely, and, uh, and that's a good example, really, of, of um, uh, what oftentimes happens in our dreams. Uh, in Inception, they have an interesting perspective about how they can um, share dreams, which as far as I can tell, we've never been able to do that. The other thing is that a lot of times people will uh, talk about the sexual nature of dreams. Freud was in particular uh, fascinated with this. And uh, when actually explored, and like I mentioned, uh, um, some of my clients in the past have kept dream journals or sleep journals, and uh, it's a relatively small number. Uh, in uh, men, in men, it's about one to 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 ten. Um, in men, and in women, it's like one out of forty, or one out of thirty. One to thirty uh, in women of how many dreams they actually have that are sexual in nature. So that's kind of a misnomer in our society today um, that the dreams are, are filled with sexual imagery. Um, the other thing that happens with dreams is also the, the nature of nightmares. And, and um, here in Colorado, uh, after the shooting, uh, one lady was interviewed that uh, the images of the uh, theater she was in um, got replayed uh, in her dreams. And so she ended up, unfortunately, just avoiding sleep because of how often those things got worked out. So um, in spite of the fact that we're working things out in our minds, the two-track mind is also monitoring what goes on in, uh, in, in our environment. Now, the question is, is uh, and let me make a space here, is uh, essentially the question of why, why we dream at all. And there are a variety of, of um, uh, there are a variety of theories that, that come up. Uh, Freud, for example, one of the reasons that he thought we dreamed was to satisfy, um, satisfy our wishes. Or, or work out, um, satisfy wishes. And that was Freud's idea. His, he, he used to refer to dreams as the royal road uh, to the unconscious. Royal road. And, and that, was, that was really what Freud referred to it as, to the unconscious, is that it was kind of this unadulterated material that you could actually get access to um, through listening to people's dreams. So it satisfies wishes. Secondly, uh, the, the other possibility is that it files away memories. And, and I have uh, encouraged um, students to understand that if they're studying 
probably once you have studied it through and feel like you have a decent grasp of it, the best thing you can probably do is go to sleep because it consolidates memory. Uh, and, and this is part of the, the in, info processing uh, theory that uh, uh, holds that essentially dreams are a way of filing uh, things that we have learned, of filing away. Another one, uh, another one, and I'll just move over here, is uh, the, the whole idea of developing and preserving neural pathways. Uh, develop and preserve. Neural pathways, I'll just say neural paths. And, and essentially, this idea is it's, it serves a physiological function. It provides the brain with periodic stimulation and at the same time kind of nails down learning paths that we have been using in our wake state. Um, the, other, the other aspect here is that we've got a lot of what, what's often referred to as neural static. And essentially, dreams are a way to make sense of it. And so they take this static and they, uh, they make a story or uh, make sense of it somehow that uh, will put it all together. I think in a lot of ways, that's exactly why so often it, it, there's such fantastic images that, that come into play during that uh, point in time. The last one is really uh, cognitive development. And one of the things that we see on a regular basis is uh, the, the younger the person is, the more time they spend sleeping. And so sleep clearly plays a role in uh, cognitive development. And we can't really underestimate that. Um, little people uh, are consolidating learning, uh, so they consolidate learning, and the neural pathways are further developing, and so oftentimes pruning and consolidation occur for young people in general. So um, the, the, the uh, kids experience REM sleep far more than adults do, and uh, they, they are, it's in terms of how much they um, uh, spend sleeping, and you see that even in young um, babies of other species, whether that's uh, like cats, for example. Kittens spend a lot of time sleeping. They have a very active point in time during their day, and then they just are conked out for a while. The last thing I want to mention, and I'm going to have to carve out one more space, is this idea of REM rebound. And when we are deprived of, of our REM sleep, um, what happens is that when we finally get to sleep, you see a rebound in sleep. Um, one of the things that happens, particularly if you ever travel east toward a, uh, or west, ultimately to Asia, and you work your way past back uh, over the international timeline, uh, you lose entire days. And so but I, I, uh, there were a couple different times that I made travel to Thailand. And going there wasn't nearly as bad as coming back. Uh, going west was, uh, I, I seemed to, to bounce back relatively well. But when I came back east to the United States and got home, I, I went to sleep and I didn't wake up for 18 hours. And that, that's, that's a good example, this REM rebound that I'm talking about um, in, in terms of our, our, uh, our body recalibrating around a healthy balance again. So uh, there are biological and psychological explanations uh, of behavior, and they are partners, essentially, not um, competitors.